I, I heard the news about uh, Kent while listening to my, this is my neck of the woods. So I'll just start with that um, while I was on the train and it kind of prompted a discussion between me and a guy opposite who was a, a lawyer um, who was absolutely fuming about this, strangely. Um, and I, so I rang my landlord and I said, you know, I, I'm, I just I texted him and I said, I'm really sorry about the, you know, Kent being in these restrictions because he, along with a gazillion other landlords and restaurant and pub owners and people in hospitality, have were, were just about clinging on to that little bit of hope that maybe, just maybe, the corner will be turned and Christmas can pick it back up again. And you know you can do a lot of business in those those Christmas weeks, and and, and maybe this was just the f- a, a, a tiny slither of hope, a little bit of light. And when I sent the text to him, I didn't realise he didn't know, so he he called me back and said, "Where have you heard this?" And I said, "Well, it's it's just been announced." He said, "I'm literally sitting here in the pub uh, with Kaylee, who's his kind of one of his sort of head." Uh, bar manager uh we're doing the christmas rotor and i could have cried for him the thought that they were sitting there probably churning over that it's looking okay that part of kent by the way uh is, is under the 200 per 100,000. Uh, it's only when you get further out to different parts i know thanet have got it bad uh, but swale for those who don't know this is sittingbourne faversham and the isle of sheppey uh, these are the areas that for whatever reason, uh, whether it's individuals, people, I don't know what the reason is. Uh, I could speculate, but that might not be fair. It's those regions that have pulled the rest of it down. OK, and I'm sure every region around the UK right now can tell kind of similar stories. Well, our, our area isn't this. So why? You know, they've gone for the whole the whole county, etc. So this is just my own experience in a, a you know an hour long trip coming into work, uh, a conversation with a man who'd. Uh, and here's the th- the bit that really bugs me about this. So my gym up the road is is going to be open, um, and I can draw a dozen parallels between the gym and the pub. Um, my local pub, which literally is just a stone's throw from where I live, um, practiced. The whole social distancing um, rules and regulations after when the lockdown eased, lockdown one eased in an incredibly impressive way. I mean, it it was done very, very well. um, And I thought they implemented it brilliantly. And him and the staff were just on it. And people who came to the pub seemed to be on it. I I didn't the, the, the way the tables were set must have been tricky, more tricky than you imagine. Tricky behind the scenes, tricky for a whole bunch of reasons. So. They had essentially, I would suggest confidently that that pub and probably along with many, many others would be a far safer environment than my gym. But my pub can't open. Now, that to me is utterly nonsensical. I think the data has has shown consistently that actually it's not really been pubs where this thing has been the greatest problem. It's been other areas and, and the home, I think. Is, is, is sort of right up there. But the tiers have now been set out. More areas face tougher restrictions. The health secretary said most places were in the middle level, tier two, including London and Liverpool, the Liverpool city region, previously in the highest tier. Uh, several areas, Manchester City Council, will have the highest level, tier three. Just three areas will be in the lowest level of restrictions. That's tier one, just three. So if you live on the Isle of Wight, Cornwall, and the Isle of Scilly, then, well, between the Isle of Wight and the Isle of Scilly, that's about 18 people that will be experiencing the joys of that. Uh, and Cornwall, where there have been no recorded cases in the past week, uh, that will be the only area of England in Tier 1. Uh, the government set out the reasoning behind the tier decision for each area in a written ministerial statement. A full list, of course, will be available uh, more so throughout the course of the day. Matt Hancock told the Commons, hope is on the horizon. Get out of here, you fool. Hope is on the horizon. Tell that to Ben, my landlord. His business is about to go down the swanee. That's where we're at on this. Hope is on the horizon. Matt Hancock really is bloody awful, isn't he? He's just bad. 
He's and do you know the worst thing about he kind of look I said this the other day, he looks as if he's really enjoying it as well. Every part of him, he looks like the Rada kid that's enjoying the performance. He says, uh, we still have to go further, so we must all dig deep. Uh, we should see these restrictions not as a boundary, but to push as a limit on what the public health advice says we can safely do in any area. Right. So close more businesses, Matt. Devastate more lives. Make more people unemployed in areas where the rate doesn't even register as being alarming. Around 21 local authorities uh, and areas will be in the highest levels of restrictions. I'm talking to you, Birmingham. I'm talking to you, Leeds, Sheffield, Tees Valley, uh, Combined Authority, North East Combined Authority, Lancashire. Uh, what else have we got? Slough, Bristol, Kent I've mentioned, uh, Leicester. Here's the funny thing, right? In Kent, I don't know how many places around the UK this happens. So in Kent is an area called Medway. Okay, Medway is Gillingham, Chatham, Strood. I think I've got that right. Now, Medway is a, a completely separate um, authority to Kent. It's curious. Okay, Most people don't realise this. There's a little bit in the middle of Kent that's its own local authority. And having worked in regional radio, I know that... The, you absolutely, on the pain of death, do not just confuse the two. Don't fail to distinguish between the two. Different education, health, all sorts of other issues. It's a sep unilateral authority. That's the word, isn't it? Um, so it runs its own thing. You're forever being told that just because it happens in Kent, it doesn't mean it happens in Medway. It's a constant thing. Okay, it used to kill me, this thing. How, the, how did they get their own authority? If you've been out for a night in Chatham, you'll understand why they possibly should have their own authority. But that's a whole other story. And yet here they are now just lumped into the same category as the... I don't know what the figures are uh, for Medway in terms of our rates and uh, per 100,000 infections. So if you're in Slough, um, if you're in Leicester, in those areas, Bristol too, uh, differences between the new tiers include restrictions on where households can meet up as well. So... Slight differences. The, 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 the chink of light, if you like, is that the gyms can open and most shops will be able to function. But of course, that doesn't answer the question uh, because lots of things are dependent on lots of other things. So if people can't go out and mix, then that has an effect on retail. Uh, if people aren't able to go, it's all very well saying, well, it's just the pubs. Well, if all the pubs are closed or the pubs are restricted, then what about the local taxi service? Where does that leave that? Uh, what does it mean for any other associated knock-on effect for hospitality, of which there are many? And if you own a pub, by the way, and you've got to churn out a substantial meal for every customer that comes in, that has an effect as well. So you might ordinarily be a place that serves 50 people a night, but maybe 10 meals. You've now got to be geared up to serve 50 meals. So that's not going to work either. So there's lots of pubs could open but can't open because of the substantial. So even in tier two, there are bonkers situations around this as well. This strikes me. I feel like I'm back in. When did the lockdown start, by the way, Ricky? Where was it? Was it March? The... March the something, wasn't it? March. I'm thinking, yeah. It seems like a decade ago. I, right now, I feel like I'm back there again. I'm back there again. So this afternoon, I make no apology for this. I want to throw our phone lines open. Um, and this is what you'll get on talk radio that you won't really get anywhere else in the same kind of way, certainly with the same level of understanding. I want to hear from you. If you're in whatever tier you happen to be in, but tier three is like myself. Um, I, I feel we've just been relegated into a very dark place, us tier three merchants. Uh, but even tier two, if you run a business, you don't even have to run or own it. 23rd of March, lockdown began. June, July, August, still October, November. Wow. Eight, eight months we've been going through this. And this could carry on. No end date. They're going to keep it under review, they say, says Matt. God, he's good. He's good, Matt, isn't he? Every two weeks, they'll have a look at it and they'll come back and say, yeah, still in tier two and three, mate. Uh, so even in tier two, you're absolutely going to have 
similar hassles and grief. So what is the world you're in? Because even being in retail, can you can f suffer than even if your shop is allowed to open, you can still have the knock on effects of that. So if people aren't coming into town in the normal way that they would do, I mean, think of what town centres have become over the last few years. Places to eat, right? Places to eat and drink and lots of other hospitality areas. Uh, that's all gone. Even your costa, you can go in, but you can't sit down. Good Lord. Unless you're on the Isle of Scilly. Have we got any listeners in the Isle of Scilly? Have we? Is it the Isle of Scilly or the Scilly Isles? I think it's the Scilly Isles, isn't it? Isn't it? Oh, it's the Isle of Scilly. Is that different to the Scilly Isles? How many Scilly, Scilly Isles can you get? Nonetheless, you take my point. So the knock-on effect is huge as well. So if you're in retail, if you're a cab driver, if you're a brickie, a baker, a candlestick maker, whatever you happen to be, in whatever world. Uh, I mean, the guy, I can't say the word, actually. The guy I met on the train looked like a, a, a kind of a, a, a lawyer that you might see on, like, Rumpole of the Bailey. A very well-to-dressed man who spoke, as I discovered, like this. And he overheard me on the phone talking to my local landlord at the pub. And he said, what is the deal, then, with the new tier system? And I said... Oh, well, it looks as if I found myself doing that working class deferring to the posh man. Uh, well, well, Your Honour, uh, sir, um, what, what profession are you in? He said, I said, well, I'll tell you what I did. Uh, he said, I'm, I'm, a, um, I'm in law. I'm a lawyer. Um, and he said, I think it's a load of old, well, testicles, as he announced to a fairly packed carriage. I thought, yeah, my man, I'm with you. The council boy and the lawyer together on the train. And then he advised me to a website to go to, which was one that was very sceptical about... No, not that kind of website. Behave out there, please. He advised me to go to a, a sceptic's website about this. He was kind of going full tilt David Icke, I think. But didn't look or sound anything like that kind of person. But it did sort of tell me that this kind of transcends all backgrounds and classes and people. Uh, whatever your gig, whatever your job, whatever your circumstances, uh, I'd like to hear how this affects you. Uh, we're just digesting it, right? 0344 499 1000. Two things we know. Uh, we were lied to about the lockdown ending. It hasn't. And in some areas, it will feel more rigid. Secondly, Matt Hancock is a clown. That is a fact. And thirdly, has your life, your job, your business just been devastated? Perhaps even for the final time. Small and medium-sized business, it's not your ICIs, do they still exist? Your BPs and the like that keep this country working. It's small and medium-sized businesses. Those little shops that you see, those small businesses, the bloke that started the window cleaner round, the man that drives the cab. We all just want to get on with our lives, don't we? And we want to take our families on holiday. We just want to be ordinary, law-abiding people. We don't want much more than that. We're willing to put in the graft and in return... You know, we can buy ourselves a few treats along the way and look after our family. I think that's what most of us want out of this gig called life, isn't it? And some of that has just been removed unceremoniously uh, by Matt and his cronies over there at Westminster. How does this affect you? What's your story on the back of this? I feel desperately let down. And no, it's not just about I would love to walk into the pub tonight and go for a pint. It's not about that. Uh, it, it's bigger than that. It's more than that. It's, and the knock-on effect, I think, is the hidden story in this whole tier revelation. The knock-on effect. So, yeah, you might be able to open. That might be able to open. But what's the point? I was talking about town. If you can't go into town, there's no point in going into town. Town centres, that was it. Town centres. Where our... Almost in some areas, 90% food and bev. That's sort of what they do. So you're not going to be going in to use the other shops or facilities if you can't sit down and have a bite to eat. That's just one obvious example. 0344 499 1000. If you're in any of those areas that I mentioned, in particular Leeds, Birmingham, Manchester, Kent, Lincolnshire, Slough, Bristol. Man, this is grim. Don't worry, you've got five days off at Christmas. Huh. 